Hello everyone, welcome, welcome. My name's Charlie, and for today, we are going to be playing another 100 days in Cult of the Lamb. If you haven't yet seen my first 100 days in the wonderful Cult Boyardee, you should definitely check that out. But if you thought we reached our peak, you are sorely mistaken. In the time since that video came out, we've been gifted with the Sins of the Flesh DLC, which introduced sin, new buildings, different poop types, special little beverages, and of course, the hanky panky. They won't let me say these words. As always, I had some goals going into this 100 days, especially in light of our long-term mission to 100% the game. I wanted to collect all the follower forms, fleeces, weapons, curses, relics, and the entire deck of tarot cards. Will I be able to accomplish all of this in the next 100 days? You'll have to watch to find out. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. We continued our journey starting on day 106, directly following our victory over the one who waits. Should have been day 101, but it took me a couple days to defeat him. Don't worry about it. We'll be fine. And right off the bat, we were already seeing some of the new DLC content, including the tailor, which would allow me to craft new little outfits for my followers. I got some gold bars consecrating for that, and while they processed, headed to the gates, where I met this odd character. Uh-huh. I seek the newly anointed god successor of their victims, last of their kind. Oh, that's me! You are artless in your duties, infant god. You bestow upon the bishop's death, yet deny them rest. Set this right. Move them on, as is your duty as the new god of death. I got a promotion. Suddenly, the gates to Anura, anchor deep in silk cradle, which I worked so hard to open, slammed shut. Okay, well that was unexpected. I didn't really see any issue with the bishops experiencing eternal suffering, seeing as about 106 days ago, they tried to execute me. But this mysterious deity seemed like the kind of person not to be trifled with, so redefeating the bishops it is. I entered Darkwood just as I had all those days ago, but this time felt different. Not because of any emotional reasons or anything, mostly because I had a gun. I am now armed. I shot my way through the first few levels and rescued this little dog, throwing them into the wormhole to be indoctrinated later. Ah, it never gets old. I continued my way through Darkwood and stumbled upon Midas the starfish, who seemed to be a bit down on his luck. Oh my god! You little freaking what? I worked so hard for that money. After getting mugged by a sentient sea star, I met this silkworm named Barith, who was much kinder to me and sold me a new robe designed for five gold bars. A little bit of a ripoff, I will say, but I figured once the tailor was built, I'd need some designs ready to go. And eventually, I made my way to Valifar. Valifar the second, actually. Things were looking bleak health-wise, and combat with the blunderbuss definitely needed some getting used to. And on the brink of death, Valifar II gave me the old Kung Fu Panda treatment and sat on me to death. Yeah! Oh, what? Hello? Hi, everyone. What is going on? I had emerged in some ethereal plane with all my followers around me. At first, I thought this must be heaven, but I soon realized this was not the case. My followers were here to be sacrificed. What if I don't wanna? What if I accept death? Okay, well... Fine. This guy's name is Trash. I'll sacrifice Trash. Oh no! Trash! Oh, 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 crud. I promise this is not gonna be worth it. I continued the fight on a single heart, but as expected, Trash died in vain, and so did I. Although we unfortunately took out the trash, one might say, we did welcome this cute little guy. I'm gonna name you Toto. Oh, crud. Ravioli, no. We'll have a funeral tomorrow. Also, is everyone starving? Yeah, oh, wow. I cooked up some breakfast, but even still, faith in the cult was worryingly low, so I headed to the temple for an early morning sermon, which went exceptionally well. But then my crown started bugging out. Oh, oh, what is going on? What? What is this? Out of nowhere, my beautiful little crown turned into a snake or like a malicious tadpole or something and started speaking to me. Crown bearer, you have come far. Farther than they know. Who is they? I can feel their sin seep from their souls. Harvest it. Gather it. Use it. Lead them into depravity. Into the stinking mud of vile repudiation. Repudiate. I've never read that word before. <laughs> Apparently, sin was something I could now collect from my followers and use, kind of like devotion. I gift you these tools for the task. Oh god, what what are those? What is that? That's a fire. With that, I could now monitor the sin of my followers, but I had to be sure to absolve them and harvest their sin before it consumed them. Uh, whatever that meant. I was pumped about this development though, because sin could be used for all sorts of things, like temple upgrades, making fun clothes, and the most exciting of all, creating children. And not only that, but I had some fun new doctrines to declare. 
followers compete in a naughty naked dance what or let your followers indulge in havoc and violence i'm kind of feeling like dancing naked is better than like beating each other up so we're gonna go with this one everyone seemed to be pretty excited about our new activity so i decided to just go for it see this is just so much better than beating each other up don't we think i nominated nessie as the leader of this occasion and removed the sin from her like a freaking tapeworm and the day would only get better oh my gosh rainbow poop what is what the an upgraded broom as i did some housekeeping i saw that nessie had fallen ill which probably had nothing to do with the tapeworm fiasco earlier i'm sure i sent her to rest and then right after unlocked the mating tent because in all honesty i want grandchildren in that moment though cow our resident tax collector came up to me completely naked and side note i did realize in this moment everyone was still exposed to the elements but he asked me for two extravagant fish feasts which i accepted that night as i cleaned up around the cult i got yet another broom upgrade as well as a spider skull and when I buried it in the ground, Weber! Now in Cult of the Lamb, there's a lot of cute little creatures, but is there a creature cuter than Remy? No, no, there isn't. That's why I'm super pumped that the sponsor for today's video is Disney Dreamlight Valley. Now I will be so real. I booted it up just to play a little, check it out, and then I continued to play for eight hours. It's just really fun and cozy. Basically, you arrive in Dreamlight Valley and learn that the place is overrun with night thorns. All the villagers have fled and lost their memories, and it's up to you to find them and bring them back. There's also a bunch of other things to do along the way, like mining gems, planting crops, fishing, and... I mean, each of these doors alone represents a new realm to explore where you get to meet characters from your favorite Disney and Pixar movies, but my first priority was to go and meet Remy. Yes, little chef! I got to cook with Remy, even made the famous ratatouille dish. This game is also constantly getting updated with new characters, realms, and features, so there's always new stuff to explore, and rest assured, I will be doing so. If it sounds like something you'd enjoy, definitely click the link in the description down below and go check it out. A huge thank you to Gameloft for sponsoring this video, and with that, let's get back to it. After more fun poop sweeping the next morning, I headed to Pilgrim's Passage to get some fish for cow's feasts, and despite fishing all day, didn't manage to reel in enough. I went straight back on day 111, and can I just say, it is so weird to me that the new fishing mechanic is basically identical to the Stardew one. I don't know why, it just feels wrong. But I managed to gather all the fish needed for cow's feasts, which he was quite grateful for. And upon gathering all the consecrated resources, I whipped up our new tailor and placed it next to the confession booth. We still needed a bunch of materials to actually craft the robes though, and we also had the more pressing issue of being totally broke. So I sent Toot on a journey to hopefully fix that problem. Bring back the bacon, Toot. We're all counting on you. The following day, I invested in a hatchery to hatch our eggs. I still wasn't sure exactly what eggs those were, but I continued tidying up and received yet another broom upgrade. Honestly, I'm loving these broom upgrades. I just don't know why. Although the hygiene of the cult was kept up to par, the same could not be said for Joe, who requested to eat a bowl of poop. Sure, buddy. I whipped one up for him, watched him chow down, and would you look at that? His faith is justified. I don't see how the A connects to the B there, but anytime, Joe. With the chores squared away, I entered Darkwood once again and immediately came face to face with this cursed screaming thing. Personally, not a fan. I took a much needed moment of peace and picked some of the new grapes for a while, accidentally finding this transmogricon? Transmogricon. And then bumped into this moth named Monch who offered to increase the loyalty of any follower. Of course, I chose Cow because you gotta trust the people who handle your money. With my pockets full of grapes and my personal finances in better shape, I entered the fight against Amduzius this time, and I'll admit, it did not go well. I was able to get them down to half health, but succumbed to a quick and painful death. I even sacrificed Fuzzle for a second go. Nobody knows this guy who, like, when did you join the cult? But again, I failed. Why am I so bad now? I feel like I need a faster weapon. Dang it. I returned to Colt Boy RD ashamed, but you gotta look at the silver linings. Without Fuzzle, we now have one less mouth defeat. Still though, I was feeling pretty down. Like all my combat prowess from my previous adventures had been all but erased. So I thought, what better way to raise your spirits than an impromptu wedding to a raccoon named Skrunk? Though getting married on such a whim wasn't without its consequences. Oh, I forgot I was married to Nugget. I am so sorry, Nugget. In better news, the mating tent had finished 
finished construction, which meant it was time to make some babies. I paired up Wing and Judy, both stand-up members of the community, with great traits to pass on to the next generation. Lucky for me, they were more than happy to do the doodly-doo and popped out a surprisingly large egg. So this is what the hatchery is for. It all makes sense. Unfortunately, I didn't have any cotton to build a hatchery, so I just left Wing and Judy's egg on the ground, which felt very, very wrong. And I rushed straight over to Darkwood, hoping to find some cotton to hatch my new grandchild. At one point, I thought I found it, but it turned out to just be hops. Just before the boss fight, though, I managed to find some to harvest, which meant I could now die in peace. But to my surprise, and probably to the relief of all my followers back home, the fight against Barbados went great, and I didn't even need to sacrifice anyone to defeat them. For my victory, I earned my first god tier, as well as a bunch of gold. And with the cotton I'd picked, I got a hatchery built at last and tossed Judy and Wing's egg inside. Given the fact that we'd stumbled across both grapes and hops too, it only seemed natural to use my divine inspiration to unlock the drink house. Rocky would not live long enough to see it though. Poor guy. As I took him to his new forever home, I noticed my crypt corner was getting a little full. I literally had no room to put him, so as darkness fell, I did the unspeakable. Don't mind me, just watering some crops to uh, cook some meals, you know. Is everyone in bed? Is everyone in bed? All right, I'm so sorry about this, Rocky. I've never done this before. Ah! Oh, that was horrible. I just didn't have any more space. I felt like a monster. What kind of cult leader would do such a horrible thing? On the morning of day 117, I held a sermon, declared a new ritual of sin, and then met up with... Uh? who sensed a shift in me. Probably my deep and unrelenting shame for butchering Rocky. But in fact, they'd sensed my victory over Barbados and the shiny god tier I now had in my pocket. Graciously, they also allowed me to give them a name. And after thorough consideration, I went with Papoy. In all honesty, I had no clue this would be a permanent thing, so completely my bad. I was in a bit of a minions era at the time, I'm ashamed to admit. I gave Papoy my god tier and in return, received a forgotten commandment stone, which allowed me to declare previously unchosen doctrines for my cult. And with that, I entered Darkwood once again, determined to earn even more god tears, and rescued this little bunny on my way to fight Valifar. Our battle was pretty neck and neck the whole time, until I got blasted by their fireball. I did sacrifice Buggy for another chance, but it didn't turn out well either. I've really gotta stop doing that. Upon returning home, I welcomed Doris, turning her into a frog, and then greeted Toot as he returned from his journey. And during his time away, he'd only managed to find a measly 39 coins. Toot this is not the bacon. And speaking of bacon, everyone in my cult was actually starving, but I quickly whipped up some meals and tidied around the place, getting an even fancier broom for myself. In an attempt to find more food and money, I once again entered Darkwood that evening, rescuing this little giraffe, and then once again, dying to Valifar. I have no explanation for why I was gaming so badly in this moment, but it comes back to me eventually, okay? I returned home once again a failure, but I needed to keep faith in the cult high, and what better way to maintain my appearance as their great leader than to construct a tent of my own. After moving all the huts down to the bottom left, I placed my super cool traffic cone at the top and then lined the ground with hay to section the area off as the living quarters. And with the huts now prepped, I welcomed Glorp to the cult and made some dinner for everyone before entering Darkwood once again, determined as ever not to die. I was doing pretty well and even managed to rescue this hedgehog, which really reminded me of Beefaroni, my first ever cult follower. May his beefy soul rest in peace. I'd been kind of killing it in the final battle with Valifar too, but eventually they whittled me down to one heart and I decided to escape so I didn't have to get thwomped again. Although I felt slightly ashamed, all those feelings vanished when I saw that my egg, or our egg, was ready to hatch. Oh god. Was I expecting a caterpillar? No. No, I was not. Didn't know a chicken and rabbit could create that, but I named him Bjorn and kind of just let him crawl around unsupervised. It had been a while since we committed some sins, and I wanted to put my hops and grapes to good use. So, using some consecrated planks, I began construction on the drink house. Immediately as it finished, I whipped up a bog brew for Eric, a fruit elixir for Toot, and a juniper drink for Judy, and they proceeded to get instantly sloshed. Eric became violently ill, and Toot soon met the same fate before collapsing right into their own vom. Truly, a class act. I definitely felt like I'd abused my power a bit, so I reined it in a little and gathered everyone at the temple for a sermon. There, I used my Forgotten Commandment stone to unlock the Industrious trait, which would increase work speed by 15%. And for the rest of the day, I practiced what I preached and devoted time to rearranging the Crypt Corner. On the morning of day 123, I welcomed Ham to the cult, and seeing as my crusading hadn't been going too swimmingly as of late, I decided to take it easy and went to the Lonely Shack to play some knuckle bones and go for the Master of Chance achievement. 
I'd only played it once in my first 100 days and still had very little clue how it worked, but somehow I managed to beat Ratau and Flinky with absolute ease. Next up was Clunko and Bop, and although Bop is a worm, I can't help but feeling like that's kind of unfair. Things were looking bad up until the very end when I was somehow able to clutch it, and that left the final and most skilled opponent for us to defeat. Shrew me. I gave it everything I had, and somehow, I won on the first try. I'll be honest, I think I found my calling. I'm either super lucky, or it's 100% natural born talent. Either way, I am never playing knuckle bones again. It's like how in my middle school basketball career, I made a single basket and then just never shot the ball again, so now for the rest of my life, I will have an 100% success rate. I wish I was kidding. I returned to Colt Boyardee, a knuckle bones champion, and prepared some dinner before setting off on another crusade. I also saw the that apparently Bjorn was sad because I'd neglected him? Like, sorry kid, mommy's on a crusade. By this point, I was praying that I'd be able to beat Valifar, partly for my sanity and partly because I was running out of people to sacrifice, but I started this run with a decent amount of health and confidence, so when I took them on this time, uh, I still died. However, after sacrificing our newest recruit, Ham, I tactically used my Seal of the Bishop's Relic to freeze time and finish the job. And with that, I'd finally defeated Valifar and claimed my second god tier. After welcoming Garfield to the family, I handed out a bunch of gifts to my followers, including a lamb doll to Doris and some life prolonging skull necklaces to Cow, Joe, and Toot. I was becoming increasingly concerned about Bjorn's life trajectory, so to remedy that, I declared a new doctrine that made all followers hatched in the cult have a higher loyalty. I also tested out the Sinner's Pride ritual while I was there, nominating Sport to take on everyone else's sin. It seemed like they barely survived the process, to be honest, but at the end of the day, I got a Worm of Sin, which I I used to upgrade the temple, so overall, a win. I was getting very curious about all the new sin mechanics too, so afterward, I unlocked the demonic summoning circle, which allows followers to join you on a crusade as a demonic spirit. Although I wouldn't be using it just yet, it would definitely come in handy later down the line. First thing the next morning, I offered my second god tier to Popoy, who rewarded me with a light necklace, which evidently has no known effect. At the time, I was kind of peeved that they gave me something so useless, but I'd soon learned that this item was essential for finishing a very cool secret achievement later in the video. I returned to the cult with my prize, but when I got there, I saw Bjorn going through what I can only describe as puberty. What? No, what? How are you dissenting? You were born here. You have loyalty. Don't make me put you in jail. Oh, he's screaming. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Stop it. No, don't go, don't go, don't go. Oh, this is not good. Oh. Well, that didn't go well. Yeah, Bjorn freaking left. Even took 17 coins with him. What a little brat. Like, I hatched him and cared for him, and he just up and left us. Discouraged by the sudden loss of Bjorn, I went to the temple for a sermon, unlocking dagger mastery, and then initiating yet another little naked dance to collect more synth. I wanted to hatch another grandchild. The first one sucked. I appointed Weber as the leader and then made some post-ritual refreshments to get everyone sloshed. Not my brightest idea. Nugget and Weber started fighting and I had to break that up. Then as I was constructing the demonic summoning circle, they began fighting again. Can you please stop? Like, just stay away from each other. Oh, they're happy now? Okay. Eventually, they resolved things amongst themselves just in time for Eric to drop dead. I mean, at least he got to wear clothes for his final moments. Once I'd rescued this rhino from from Halab to fill the Bjorn-shaped hole in my heart, I began another crusade, determined to get my next god tier, and things were going swimmingly until... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I have you now. You're nothing but a leader of lies, spinning a web of deceit. I'll show the others the truth. What? Bjorn, what the heck? I don't want to kill Bjorn. I don't want to kill Bjorn. Oh my god, he's a little bit fearsome though. With his massive sword and fire arrows, Bjorn had somehow grown from a cute little grub to a terrifying warrior, hell-bent on revenge. And although he'd gone full villain on me, he was still my first hatchling. I couldn't bear to hurt him. Bjorn, Bjorn, let's talk about this, buddy. Oh my god, oh my god. Bjorn's killing me! I don't want to kill you. You're my son. Well, not technically, but kind of. But after an entire night of fighting and pleading, I knew I had no choice. I bred you with so much love and care, and you're making me do this. This is the worst day ever. To be fair, I did not know about the nurturing function yet, so I actually did not breed him with love and care, and looking back now, I totally understand this reaction on Bjorn's part. I continued on crusading, devastated that I'd killed my only grandchild, but the day only got worse when Skrunk, my beloved second husband, passed away. It was not a very long marriage, I think like 13 days, but it was a very happy one. It felt like all 
the love in my life was gone. First my grandson, and now my husband. So when I stumbled across this weird shrine that required one of my hearts as an offering, I just agreed. I was hurting so much already. And in return, I got a diary. Okay, I don't know what this means. Ancient tablet? Lore? I await one who values truth over all else? Um, oh, don't tell me I paid a heart for some lore. At this point, I had little left to lose, so I just went for it and faced off against Amduzius the second, fully expecting to die, but somehow I was able to beat them. Oh, well, that was easy. Of course, this earned me my third god tier and a bunch of gold that I gathered up before heading back to Cult Boy RD. And when I arrived, Weber was dissenting and spreading lies about me. Just fantastic. I tossed them in prison and tried to educate them, but the damage was already done. Weber's falsehoods had brought our faith to near zero, so I made a beeline for the temple and declared a holiday so everyone would love me again. But even with the faith restored, the memories of Bjorn ate away at me, and I knew it was time for another challenge child. I paired together Cow and Toto, but Toto was not interested in the slightest, which was very upsetting for Cow. I gave him a muffin to cheer the little guy up and then tucked my followers into bed before visiting Papoy. And in exchange for my third god tier, I was given a golden skull necklace, an item that makes the wearer immortal. I was so excited to have been given such a valuable item and I knew I'd have to carefully consider who deserved such a gift. But until then, I entered Darkwood for my next crusade on a mission to gather more followers. Along Along the way, I bumped into Barith the Silkworm, who really reminded me of Bjorn. Made me sad. But as I pillaged his stuff, I found something amazing. Yes! The worm follower form. I bought a new outfit from Barith as a thank you and rescued this little guy, but the worminess would only continue because I then came across Clunko and Bop. Not only is Bop a worm, but when I began the boss fight against Leshy, you know what I realized? Leshy is a worm as well. Truly the wormiest crusade ever, I tell ya. With only two hearts left, I had very little hope for myself against Leshy, but through Garfield's generous sacrifice, I was able to defeat him. Just die! Yes! <laughs> and we got a little Leshy! Oh my god! So cute! Finally, as Papoy had requested, Leshy was released from his eternal unrest and could now spend the rest of his days as a happy little follower in my cult. I got three god tiers for the victory, which was huge, but even better, I returned home to a bunch of new followers. I welcomed in Moto Moto, who I thought was a hippo but clearly is not, as well as Wormburger, Eggy, and of course, Leshy. Soon after indoctrinating them all, Leshy came up to me asking to find his eye in Darkwood, and I agreed to look for it, but not before dedicating some time to my matchmaking duties. Toot and Wormburger? Definitely a cute match. I put their golden egg in the hatchery, gave it a little pat, and then upgraded our refinery to speed up the production of consecrated resources for improvements around the cult. On the morning of day 131, I held a sermon and conducted the sinner's pride ritual with two, using my sin worms to upgrade the temple and adding some delightful stained glass windows. When I visited Papoy that afternoon, they also showed me a new purgatory realm that I could enter once a day, during which no time would pass in my cult. From what I understood, it was kind of like a challenge run boss rush type of thing, and seeing as I had so much to do in the overworld, this wouldn't be my priority for a while. I gave them the god tiers I'd won from Leshy and received a holy talisman shard, a beefalo skeleton, and another shard, so not the most exciting prizes. But in any case, I rescued this recruit from Halab and went on the hunt for Leshy's eyeball. It turns out his eye was actually a relic that spawned orbiting eyeballs to damage enemies. And although Leshy was one of my adoring followers now, there was still an achievement I had to do that didn't feel great defeat Leshy without taking damage. After rescuing this little deer fellow, I tested the waters and gave it a shot, but defeating the bishop's hit list would be no small feat. After, I returned to Colt Boyardee and spoke to Leshy, who kindly let me keep his eye before indoctrinating Zipper the Bunny, my least favorite Animal Crossing NPC. I also welcomed in Tilly the Elephant, and in this moment, I realized I needed a level 4 follower to sacrifice in order to unlock the door to our next dungeon, Anura. I showered Doris with gifts to increase her loyalty and she was really enjoying it, but I didn't have the heart to tell her that this was very much not in her favor. Given the fact that my first attempt at beating Leshy Hitless went so poorly, I did a bit of research online and learned that this upgrade, the Fleece of the Berserker, was my ticket to success. I unlocked it using a holy talisman I'd assembled and let me tell you, this was a huge development. Wearing this fleece multiplies your weapon damage by 10, but it also makes you a one-hit kill. Very nerve-wracking. I was eager to give it a try though, so after a 
upgrading the hatchery to level 2, unlocking the final upgrade for the demonic summoning circle, and accepting a quest to collect flowers from the one who waits, I entered Darkwood once again. And honestly, I died very soon after starting. Are you kidding? I literally only managed to pick 7 flowers. I went in for round 2 soon after, collecting all the flowers I needed, and then stumbled across a new area I'd never encountered before. For some reason I was told to exhume the buried bodies, and they did not seem too thrilled about that, but I also ended up finding my first lost message. Something about a herd and a worm. Very cryptic. As I was saving a new follower, I saw that Wing had died, which was very unfortunate, but I had bigger things to worry about. Somehow I'd managed to make it to the Leshy fight in my Berserker fleet, so with only half a heart, I began the battle. It was terrifying, to say the least, with his dangerous minions and that blue spitball attack, but miraculously, yes, I was able to do it. Let's go, my heart, my heart, my, my sweet little tiny heart. When I got home, I gave our egg a little pat-pat, welcomed her two to the cult, and then gave a sermon. Things seemed to be going splendidly, and just for fun, I did the Sinner's Pride ritual once again on my spouse, Nugget. Um, it did not go well. They did give me two sin worms, but then they said something super concerning about being damned and punishing me in my next life. What? Um, well, at least I can upgrade the temple. Did I just send my spouse through a wormhole to face eternal damnation? Perhaps. Am I a horrible partner? Yes, it appears that way. But did it get us some nice temple decor? Oh yes, look how pretty it is in here. Using the divine inspiration my lovely followers had generated for me, I unlocked some propaganda speakers and then delivered the one who waits his flowers before lavishing Doris with gifts and bringing her to level 4. Before venturing out once again, I held another sermon in our newly renovated temple and unlocked the godly weapons, which earned us the Weapons of Plenty achievement for unlocking all the weapons. I also changed my fleece to the non-berserker variety and built some propaganda speakers to keep everyone behaved before sacrificing Doris to open the door to Anura. Sorry, Doris. <laughs> Oh god, <laughs> that's not good. Ugh, yeah, okay. I entered Anura expecting to face some challenges, but I never expected to see. Nugget, no! I didn't know, I'm so sorry. I feel so bad, we're literally married too. Can I like save you or this is just our life now? Oh my, wow. You know, killing a random cult follower is one thing, but killing your spouse is on totally another level. I felt so bad. Nugget's life wasn't truly over though, because upon bumping into Witness Bathin, Nugget once again dropped down from the sky and started attacking me. I killed them once more and managed to defeat the Witness as well, earning a new follower, a good chunk of change, and their eyeball as a reward. The crusade wasn't over yet though, and once again, Nugget returned. It was almost getting comical at this point. It's not every day that you slay your cursed spouse three times in the span of a single hour. Upon defeating them this time though, I was able to draw the sin out and bring them back to the mortal plane, which was such a relief. Yay, we got Nugget back! Saving Nugget and knowing they'd be waiting upon my return was a great source of motivation for me as I went into the battle with Elagos II. My half a heart was not a very promising sign though, and I very quickly died. You're kidding, what? I chose to sacrifice Tilly the elephant, but at the last moment, I made an incredibly important realization. Oh, I just realized that was an exit down there. I don't have to be sacrificing them. Oh, that's so awkward, actually. Okay, we're gonna stop doing that uh, very soon, I promise. Oh my god, I forgot it did that. Ah! Just die, please. Just die, please. I'm begging. Oh, thank God. The weight of all those wasted lives was definitely hanging on my conscience, but it was nice to welcome some newcomers to take their place. This included Witness Bathin and Nugget, who... Are we still married? But Nugget's return wasn't the only thing to lift my spirits, because moments later, our precious egg was ready to hatch. I named the little tyke Toot Burger, and this time, resolved not to neglect them as I did Bjorn. Following sermon the next morning, I had confession with Joe, and in addition to giving me a sin worm, they also horked up a recipe for fancy robes. Like, thank you, I, I think. And this recipe reminded me that I still had yet to try out the new tailor. So I headed over and crafted up some new clothes to give Wormburger and Glorp. I also made the one who waits wear these peasant robes because there's no better way to humiliate him for the rest of eternity than to make him dress up like Shrek. He did apparently love this new outfit, but I'm sure it'll be more of a slow burn kind of torture. Using Joe's sin, I matched up Wormburger and Eggy together in the mating tent, but the egg they produced was white with red markings not golden. A little bit of a 
letdown, not gonna lie. I didn't even know that was possible. There was apparently the option to crack the egg, but as tempting as that was, I just couldn't do that to my grandchild. Instead, I brought it to the hatchery, gave it a little pat, and you know how parents play like classical music to calm their babies and make them smarter or whatever? Well, I didn't have any Beethoven on hand, but I did have the materials for a drum circle. I'm sure this is just the kind of music that's good for a child's brain development. Toot danced happily to my sweet drumming, but I think my guitar hero skills were too good because like Nugget, he ended up facing damnation for his sins. Oh, crud. Yeah, that was not ideal. I figured there was no point waiting around, so I began my next crusade into Anura, determined to save him. In my haste to locate Toot, I realized I'd forgotten to nurture Toot Burger, who was starting to feel neglected. This honestly impacted me more than I expected, and after rushing the fight with Gujin and quickly losing, I ran straight home to give them some love. I mean, for real, this is why Bjorn went AWOL. I wasn't about to take any chances. Toot Burger seemed to be completely fine when I checked in on them, dropped a massive poop right after, so I quickly moved on to nurture our egg in the hatchery before welcoming Doris II into the cult. The thought of Toot trapped in a Nura was really weighing on me, but I was too nervous about Toot Burger's development to leave again, so instead, I stayed home. Not only did I build another hatchery, but I also got Wormburger and Nala to produce our next egg. Wormburger was truly taking one for the team, repopulating the community. Once I'd nurtured all our little ones the next morning and gotten mugged by Glorp, I held a sermon and unlocked Might of the Devout 6, the final upgrade for increasing the starting level of weapons. With that done, I felt more than ready to embark on our next journey to a Nura, but then I saw them. Oh no. I mean, at least this time I had the comfort of knowing that killing Toot would bring them back. As I made my way through, I came across this weird body digging room again and found another lost message about one that fled the blade. Call me crazy, but I think they're talking about me. I found two once more, Mary Poppinsing from the sky, and finally managed to send them back home. But even though we'd saved two, we still had a demonic toad to fight, which went very poorly. Though my spirits were quickly lifted when I saw that Toot Burger wanted to join the cult. It seems like our nurturing had done the trick, and I'd truly never been more proud to give someone the Cult Boy RD uniform. I welcomed Toot Burger's dad home as well, and then tended to my eggies, hatching the red and white one. Oh boy. I named them Eggler, and of course, the first thing I did was give him some affection. I was starting to get pretty good at this parenting thing, and with one of the nests now empty, I matched up Toot Burger and Moto Moto to lay our next egg. I think Moto Moto likes you. Let's go, Toot Burger. I was truly overjoyed for the two of them, but, and I'm not proud to say this, my curiosity got the better of me. So I took the egg to a secluded corner where no one could see me and smashed it with a hammer. Predictably, I got an egg yolk, which was very disappointing and definitely not worth it. I felt super guilty about cracking the egg, so I made an extra effort to give Eggler some affection and then did another dance ritual just to keep everyone happy. I soon realized though that cracking the egg wasn't all bad. The eggnog you could make at the drink house with it was absolutely busted. Not only was there an 100% chance of getting a valuable resource, but it also drastically increased follower loyalty. I whipped up some drinks and food for everyone, but as I did so, Glorp freaking robbed me again. And that, that was it. I grabbed Glorp by the ankles and threw him into prison. I know technically he wasn't dissenting, but oh my god, did he deserve it. With that deed done, I then noticed that our next egg was ready to hatch, and they were so cute. I named her Willow and gave her some love. Eggler ejected a little cosmic boom boom right in front of the outhouses too, which I considered close enough to potty training to give him some love too. At that point, it felt like enough time had passed for Glorp to have learned their lesson, so I released them from jail and then headed to the temple to give a sermon. While there, I also unlocked a bunch of new eyeball relics and took Toot Burger's confession. All in all, he seemed to be doing all right considering the fact that his child was now a cup of eggnog, so I took it as a sign that he was ready to try again. Together, Toot Burger and Moto Moto created a beautiful egg, and this time, I did not smash it to pieces. To end off the day, Cow asked me to do the ritual of the ocean's bounty, and I mean, I love Cow so much that I headed straight to the temple and did just that. I also figured I might as well take advantage of the fishing buff while it was in effect and headed to Pilgrim's Passage. I purchased a couple new tarot cards, caught a bunch of fish, and then returned home to cook a bunch of fancy seafood dinners. And seeing the tarot cards at Pilgrim's Passage reminded me that there were probably a handful of others we hadn't purchased all around the map that we needed to collect. So I headed to Smuggler's Sanctuary and bought everything Plumbo had on sale, also giving him the two eyeballs I'd gotten from the witnesses on my crusades in exchange for some talisman shards. He requested that I collect the final two and give them to him for his collection, so after a relaxing 
tour of the regions, I got back to business and began another crusade through Anura. I rescued this cute little frog and then faced off against this less cute frog, and this time, I defeated them easily, getting myself another god tier. Now, I am a demon toad killer, but also a responsible grandparent. So when I returned home, the first thing I did was give baby Willow and my egg some love. As I gave the sermon for that afternoon, I unlocked the blessed relics as well as the final morgue upgrade. And after, we indoctrinated Doris the Third as well as Egler, who was all grown up. Egler's half-sibling had also been born, and I named them Yote for a reason that will become clear in just a bit. Using all the divine inspiration I received from followers and stole during crusades, I unlocked the final tabernacle upgrade, which turned out to be the last of our upgrades. A massive accomplishment. With my cult growing and developing so steadily, I knew I needed to make sure the cult's infrastructure was up to snuff. And by infrastructure, I mostly mean our capacity to handle deceased followers. Would not want a repeat of that fiasco with Rocky. I upgraded the morgue and all of our crypts before selling a truckload of bones to get the Hoarder of Wealth achievement by collecting over 666 coins. Um, I promise those two plot points are completely unrelated. The following morning, Leshy came up to me and professed his love for Moto Moto. No one is immune to Moto Moto's charm, not even the Worm King himself. Love was certainly in the air, and after speaking with Leshy, I bred Egler and Toot to create our next golden egg. I also unlocked some more relics before meeting with Papoy again, offering up my god tears for a glomer statue and a commandment stone, and then heading back into Anura. I uncovered another little morsel of lore and managed to kill Zapar on my first try, which was a pleasant surprise. And when I returned home, I saw that Willow was now fully grown and ready to join the cult. Yote would soon be grown too, as well as their unhatched sibling. Is it half-sibling or cousin? Honestly, I have zero clue how anyone in this cult is related anymore. Once I'd unlocked Sword Mastery at the temple, I tried to get Egler and Tootburger to make another egg, but unexpectedly, Tootburger wasn't into it. Egler was understandably feeling quite dejected, so I gave them a skull necklace and then handed off my god tier to Papoy for another forgotten commandment stone. With the purchase of this bison follower, I then ventured back into Anura, making it all the way to the final boss, Heket. And thanks to my surprising amount of health and incredible skill and agility, yes. Two weeks ago, I sacrificed Doris the frog to open Anura, and in defeating Heket today, I got another frog in return. I don't know what it means, but it felt significant at the time. Upon returning home to welcome Heket, I saw that our egg was ready to hatch, and we welcomed Noodle into the world. I also declared a doctrine to make crops instantly grow, upgraded our farm totems, and then went to greet our newest recruits. Among them was Bowser and and Hiket, who was apparently a royal pooper? I mean, no hate, I love that for her. Later that day, Glorp unfortunately passed away, which didn't make me feel any which way because he was a no-good thief. Even so, I had appearances to keep up, so I gave him a proper burial before planning out a massive cult design overhaul. I moved to the temple, reorganized the refineries, added a bunch of paths and decorations, and then moved the entire farming setup to the corner where the crypts used to be. It was a lot of work to move each farm plot by hand, but in doing so, I randomly got a new follower form, so that was cool. The new layout would definitely take some getting used to, but I liked it a ton more and was excited to welcome Yote into our new beautiful cult as an adult. Also, I realized that morning that because I'd unlocked all the divine inspiration upgrades a couple days ago, my shrine was now giving me god tears. This was great news because Papoy had some amazing prizes, including a couple follower forms we needed to collect. I gave them a visit and exchanged a load of god tears, getting myself a couple forgotten commandment stones, a demonic necklace, and a talisman shard to complete our next talisman. With Anura now complete and Heket indoctrinated, our next order of business was unlocking Anchor Deep, but to do that, I'd need a level 7 follower to sacrifice. But as I mentioned a while back, I'd actually already settled on Yote as our sacrifice of choice. I did name them Yote, seeing as their sole purpose in life was to be Yoted into the sacrifice portal. My apologies, friend. After bringing them up to level 7, I headed to the mating tent and matched up Willow and Heket to get our next egg ready. That evening as I gave the daily sermon, I unlocked the Curse of the Beguiler, actually receiving the Curses of Plenty achievement for collecting all the curses. Although we now had our sacrifice ready and some new curses to try out, I actually decided to head back into Anura for our next crusade. A couple days back, Aket had asked me to retrieve her throat, so I explored around, eventually finding it just hanging from this stick. And with the power of Aket's vocal cords just chilling in my pocket somewhere, I was able to defeat her original form without taking a single hit. Yes! 
Let's go. I talked to Hiket or talked at Hiket. She didn't really say anything back and then headed to the temple to make some more upgrades. I unlocked the gauntlet mastery and then declared our next forgotten doctrine, the ritual of resurrection. Do I dare? Oh my gosh. Okay, hold up. I scrolled through all our fallen members, grateful I'd kept all my dead followers buried, except for that one time. So sorry, Rocky. But I was looking for one follower in particular. Oh, our very first follower, Beferoni. Oh, he's back. I am so happy. Wait, hold on, hold on. We have to go say hello. Where, where is he? <gasps> oh, he's getting taxed straight out of the grave. <laughs> Cow, come on, give him a break. I want to give him the golden skull necklace. No, why won't he let me get... Wait, hold on. Okay, I'm seeing online that the only way is to let him die and then loot the body and take the necklace off and then give another one. But I don't know if I can bring him back from the dead twice. Maybe we should just enjoy the time we have. I don't know. I'm so sad. I was so happy and now I'm so sad. What am I supposed to do? Though we'd successfully brought Beefaroni back from the dead, for some reason I wasn't able to gift him the necklace that made him immortal. So I instead focused on creating some more new life and paired up Tootburger and Hiket, unfortunately getting another boring egg. To lift my spirits, I bought a new follower from Halab that I named Fennel and tried to take a jab at Papoy just for fun. Predictably, they snatched me up and gave me a little scolding, so instead, I offered another god tier, for which I received a loyalty necklace. Overall, the cult was thriving. Everyone was eating well, cleaning up after themselves, giving me their undying loyalty, just really happy. Uh, except for you. Sorry, buddy. We all appreciate your sacrifice. But having yoded Yote, Anchor Deep was now open, and it was just like I remembered, except all the enemies were a lot stronger now. Accompanied by Leshy's eyeballs, I freed this little otter, got mugged by Midas once again, and faced off against Witness Astaroth, who swiftly demolished me. I had a lot more followers than I thought, though, so with a noble sacrifice from Eggie, I was given another shot and defeated the Witness. I sent Astaroth home and decided to follow right after to tend to our eggs, and oh, this one's ready to go. Oh, good lord. What are you? Truly a monstrosity was born that day, and I decided to name it Sacrifice for no reason in particular. Soon after, I officially welcomed one of the more normal grandchildren, Noodle, into the cult and began running around sweeping up Sacrifice's golden poops. And I will be honest, Sacrifice was growing on me. Kind of in the same way you learn to love like a feral raccoon or something. With our hatchlings now tended to, I welcomed Scrap and Witness Astaroth to the cult before delivering Plimbo the third witness eye he'd asked for. In return, I was gifted a talisman shard and actually got the crab follower form from one of the crabs just scuttling around. Smuggler's Sanctuary was a weird place though, and for the first time, I noticed that I could offer a shell to this weird rock, which... Of course I did. And right after, I was prompted to peer into the darkness, being met once again by the evil fox. He offered me a great reward in return for one of my followers, so after much deliberation, I gave up Fennel. Goodbye, sweet Fennel. My reward turned out to be another talisman shard, and although it didn't seem like much, these shards were vitally important in our mission to 100% the game, because you needed them to unlock all the different fleeces for the lamb, and we had a lot more to go. On the morning of day 155, I made the trek to Midas's cave, hoping to confront him for his thievery, but he was nowhere in sight. At this point, I was beginning to focus on our objective of collecting the remaining follower forms, so after begrudgingly purchasing the recipe for our final silk cradle decoration, I searched Midas's riches and found the starfish form. Before heading out, I used my gold bars to buy some more tarot cards and then gave birth to another monstrosity, Booger. I felt as if the name reflected their likeness. Also, if you have any names you'd like to see for followers and videos to come, definitely comment them below because I'm clearly beginning to struggle on that front. Having run my errands and tended to the children, I felt it was time to take another trip into Anchor Deep. Immediately, I rescued this duck from capture and they looked just like Glorp, which kind of made me hate them. By the next day, I managed to reach Haberim and with the single croc I'd gotten from Klonek during my exploration, I was feeling good. I mean, it had a little red crown gibbets. How could I not win? And sure enough, with only half a heart of health left, I just barely defeated them. When I returned home, 
home, I gave my demon children some nurturing before welcoming beans into the cult. I couldn't even stand the sight of them after what Glorp did to me, so I decided to change their follower form to the starfish. That is much better. Actually, I did get mugged by one of them too. I'm starting to sense a pattern. In my spare time, I traveled to Spore Grotto and bought the remaining tarot cards there for my collection before making breakfast for the kids. And what do you know, Sacrifice was ready to officially join the cult. They grow so fast. I'll be honest, at this point it was pretty clear that sacrificing sacrifice was completely off the table. Upon delivering the morning sermon, I unlocked Blunderbuss Mastery, the final weapons upgrade, and then headed back to Midas' cave to buy the last tarot card there. With every weapon now completely mastered, I once again made my way through Anchor Deep, feeling much better about my odds. And by the time I'd reached the final stage of the crusade, I had nine and a half hearts. I don't think I've ever been this healthy in my entire life. It was no surprise that I defeated Salios effortlessly. As soon as I got back, Egler ran up to me and asked to be one of my disciples. And honestly, I couldn't think of anyone better to be my loyal servant, so I headed to the temple to conduct our first ritual of discipleship. Egler got themselves a little halo, so cute, but I still needed to test their allegiance. I immediately took their confession to see if they were pure of heart, and in all truth, I found Cow and Zipper fusing into one being way more concerning. On all accounts, Egler was a a sincere worm and even confided in me that cult boy rd had given them a safe place to call home oh that is so cute wait oh <gasps> a new path oh my gosh no way what is this empowered shrine of disciples oh heck yeah this new shrine would grant me boosts during my crusades but in order to build it i needed stone and gold bars once my refineries were going consecrating some resources i returned to midas's cave to visit the evil fox guy again and he had had something of great value to offer me in exchange for either two of my followers or half a heart. I just couldn't risk the fox taking anyone I truly cared about and I'm a selfless leader so I took the hit and got surprise surprise another talisman shard. And seeing Booger all grown up immediately upon my return just reminded me why my sacrifice was worth it. After constructing the new shrine I upgraded the temple with the sin I'd been collecting and then visited Papoy to trade in some more god tears. With my new commandment stone and missionary necklace I headed back into anchor deep saving this hippo rhino and then getting absolutely walloped by Balzabub the second. Seeing as Moto Moto had died of old age a while back, I named our new follower Moto Motu in his honor. And that night, I returned to Spore's Grotto to meet up once more with the evil fox, apparently for our last rendezvous ever. Okay, one last deal. I'm gonna like want to kill every follower I have, I swear. Allegedly, this would be his most coveted prize yet, but in order to get it, in exchange, I want one thing. Ratow! No. The rat is old and of no use to you or anyone else. Give Ratao's death meaning? Oh, no! I mean, I have to say yes, right? Oh, God. Oh, Ratao, no! No, wait, Lamb, don't trust this murderer. I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I'm a monster. Stop laughing! As our bargain has been struck, allow me to fa make fair return. The gift of clarity. You know exactly the kind of creature you are. You should count yourself lucky. No. No. Oh! Oh, 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 okay, cool, cool, cool. We got a follower form. In exchange, the evil fox gifted me the wolf follower form as well as a talisman shard. My dearest friend and mentor's life for the cult equivalent of a Fortnite skin. Fantastic. Wait, so if we go to Lonely Shack, is he actually like gone? I'll weep, I'll weep. Hello, Lammy, how's it going? You know, I've seen your followers around, got some nice new clothes. Wait, Ratao's really gone and they don't even care. You're such a horrible friend. I mean, I'm the one who killed him, so I really don't think I should have been talking. In light of Ratao's death, the only thing I could think to do was fill the void with more grandchildren. So I introduced Toot Burger and Bowser and then entered Anchor Deep once again to face Balzabub. But while I was on my crusade, another tragedy occurred. No, we lost Ratao. Tau and Ratu. I'm gonna lose my freaking mind. I entered the fight with Balzabub the second, completely enraged by my losses. That was two Ratau's gone in two days. Granted, Ratu was a badger, but it's still sad, okay? Fueled by my grief, I defeated Balzabub and also got myself a metric ton of cauliflower. Victorious, I returned home and welcomed Scrap the second to the cult before trading my god tears with Papoy. In exchange, I received another commandment stone and a dark necklace. 
the counterpart to the light necklace I'd gotten earlier. With both the light and dark necklaces now in my possession, I could begin to work on the true love found achievement, to reunite Aim and Ball with Fornius. The first steps of this plan were to gift Doris the third the light necklace and scrap the second the dark necklace. And with these gifts given, I headed to the temple to perform some ritualistic sacrifices. Doris was up first. Oh, wow. Oh, oh my. Oh, what a cutie. With her sacrifice, I had freed Ball, one of Narender's henchmen. But instead of being the scary version I'd fought in my previous 100 days, he was just a cute little follower. Due to the cooldown on sacrificial rituals, I couldn't complete the rest of my quest just yet. So in the meantime, I went on another crusade through Anchor Deep. In particular, I was hoping to collect some more food for the cult, but when I selected the meat path, Ew. It was literally just three big hunks of meat. A bit disturbing, but hey, I'll take it. And soon after the room of meat, I came across the door to our next boss fight. Inside, I found Kalamari weak and deflated. Half of his face kind of looked like he'd been battered and fried, which was coincidentally what I'd planned to do to him already. Oh... Oh, oh. <laughs> that was very not cute. Oh my god. Oh my, there's like obstacles over there. That's weird. I, that was not there last time, I don't think. What the? What? But even though Kalamar looked worse for wear, this fight would not be an easy one. <gasps> what? What is that? What in the world, dude? This battle, this battle is so much harder than it was last time, I feel. I had this like thought in my head. I'm like, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, what if I beat it on the first try and then I like get the achievement and then I... <laughs> Yeah, it's not happening, by the way. I mean, I will beat it, I think. I just will not be doing it hitless, as I first thought might be a pos pos possibility. Keep going. Heal me. Dead. Dead. You're so dead. <laughs> oh, he's so cute, though. Who's this? Ow. Oh, join the cult. What a fantastic day. Day 166. It'll, it'll go in the books. I heartily welcomed Kalamar to Cult Boy RD, but literally the moment he put his little red t-shirt on, he fell gravely ill. So the poor guy spent his first night in the healing bay. As I waited for the sacrifice cooldown to subside, I continued about my daily cult tasks, hatching this little goober and naming her Sveal, and then accepting a quest from Kalamar to find his missing ear in Anchor Deep. In all honesty, I was not aware that squids had ears. On the bright side, he was also also feeling much better now. Spent a lot of time taunting me and making stupid faces. So I felt okay to head out and trade in my new god tears to Papoy. In exchange, I received a talisman shard, a bunch of commandment stones, and yet another golden skull necklace. Once I'd purchased this little dog follower from Halab, naming them Pork, I headed back into Anchor Deep. Retrieving Kalamar's ear turned out to be easy as pie, but when I returned home, there were piles and piles of golden poop everywhere. I accidentally made a lot of royal poopers. I don't even know if that's a good thing. My first order of business after cleaning it all up was to declare one of our new doctrines that forces followers to donate coins to me. Also, I realized in that moment that Cow died? When did this happen? He would have been so proud to see how much money I'd stolen from the people. I looted his body just in case he'd been skimming any coins off the top as our tax collector, but no. Cow was honest and true up until the very end. Rest in peace. Although I was sad, I found the strength to move on and went to give Column his ear back. He seemed pretty grateful, but not even a minute later, he came up to me and stole 132 coins straight out of my pocket. Honestly, I'm impressed he could yoink that much so fast, but I couldn't let this heinous crime go unpunished, so I extorted tithes from him. And let me see, he gave me back four coins. Four. If only Cow was alive to see this, I swear. After the sudden death of my dearest spouse Nugget right after, I was fed up and knew that I needed to start keeping my closest, most trusted trusted followers by my side. I ran to the temple and immediately made Willow my second official disciple, even going as far as giving her a golden skull necklace to grant her eternal life. I definitely could have given that to Nugget, but too late now. With our second disciple chosen, I got back to the follower form grind. We'd already gotten some of the trickier ones from the evil fox and Midas's cave, but I still had a handful left to get, including the snail follower form. Now, in order to attain this one, I needed to place snail shells on hidden shrines around the world. I'd already found the one in Smuggler's Sanctuary, but upon doing a bit more exploring, I was able to locate the ones in the Lonely Shack area, Midas's cave, and finally Pilgrim's Passage, obtaining the the snail follower form. The next one on my list was the poop follower form, and for that, all I had to do was cook a bunch of poop bowls. Eat up, folks. As soon as people got their hands on those poop bowls, though, well, 
Poop hit the fan. Booger got sad, Willow and Witness Astaroth fell ill, and the one who waits started dissenting and threatening to leave the cult with almost a quarter of my wealth. We almost lost the entire cult with just a couple bowls of poop, and I didn't even get the follower form. I healed everyone who'd gotten sick from consuming poop and threw the one who waits in jail for his little uprising. But as if things couldn't get any worse. Oh no. Toot Burger died. Toot Burger, the last thing Toot Burger did was eat a bowl of poop. I am the worst. After such a chaotic afternoon, I gathered everyone for a relaxing sermon. There, I declared a new doctrine that would increase follower faith whenever someone was sacrificed. And this was perfect timing because the cooldown for our sacrifice ritual was finally finished. I sent an unassuming scrap into the summoning circle and traded him for aim in his follower form. Using the sin I'd accumulated, I upgraded the temple once again and it was looking really pretty. It also reminded me that I had some other decorating projects in progress. I moved the tailor to the drum circle and drink house corner, quietly began construction on a collected shrine of disciples next to my sleeping children, and then added some light sources and paths, even playing around with some texturing to make the area feel more lived in. Bright and early the next morning, I released the one who waits from jail and he gave me his blessing to do whatever I wanted with his former minions, aim and ball. So I finally put our demonic summoning circle to good use and turned them into pions. However you say that. And with their little demon forms floating around me, I earned a huge health boost as I entered Anchor Deep. Aim and Ball continued to float alongside me as we ventured through the dungeons until we reached Fornius, and just the sight of my demons stopped her in her tracks. As it turns out, Fornius was Aim and Ball's mother, and I was more than happy to reunite these adorable little kibbies. In return for my generosity, Fornius gave me a vial of their dad's tears and a vial of hers. Awesome! With all the followers we'd been losing, witness Bath and having gone down just yesterday, the morgue was getting very full. So the next day, I built a couple crypts and began preparing the bodies for burial, but I made a massive mistake. Oh my god. Oh my god. I, I, I pressed the wrong button. Who even was that? Oh, it was Zipper. Okay, actually, no, 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 that's okay. I thought that was somebody else. Following that little scare, I calmed myself down with a bit of decorating before cooking up some lunch, which regrettably included some bowls of poop. Thankfully, this finally got me the poop follower form and out of solidarity, I ate one too. After such a touching scene the day before of Fornius reuniting with her kids, I found myself missing my own family, and before I knew it, I ended up at the Lonely Shack. But I found something that hadn't been there before. A letter from Ratau. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. I was teaching you I've begun to think of you as... Well, I hope you can think of me as... You're already better than I ever was. I know you won't make the same mistakes I did. I'm proud of you! I'm gonna throw up. I am being 100% real with you. I shed a tear in real life. To make myself feel better, I resolved to be the best cult leader for the family that I had left. First thing on my agenda was making some new clothes and showering people with gifts. It was also in this moment that I realized there was now a feature to remove necklaces. I instantly raced over to Beefaroni and replaced his existing necklace with the golden skull necklace of immortality. Now we would never be apart again, my sweet beefy boy. And speaking of beefy boys, I still had to defeat boss Calamar hitless, so I changed into the Fleece of the Berserker, headed into Anchor Deep, and gave it another shot. I do have the cloak, which is times 10 damage and I have a chance of critical hit and if I roll into an enemy it damages them so part of me thinks there's a pretty good chance you know <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, I died immediately, only mildly embarrassing. After a quick dance break with Sfeel and Kalamar, I headed back into Anchor Deep for round two, hoping for a different outcome, and... Oh, he's coming for me. How does he do that? It's seconds. Not a very strong performance on my part. Regardless, I saved this bat, naming him Rod, and crafted a mighty monster statue. And following a lovely drum circle for Toot, as everyone scuttled to bed, I prayed to the monster statue and received another new follower form, the monster. The next morning, I started the day with a wonderful sermon for my devoted followers, but as I left the temple, Kalamar robbed me again. 125 coins. I extorted him for tithes and like last time, got four coins back, which made me want to scream. That little idiot squid made me so upset that I entered Anchor Deep right after to vanquish him once and for all. Okay, this is actually a good setup because not only do we have the ranged weapon, but we also have have, oh, 
Okay, get away from me. We also have the secondary attack, which gives you two seconds of invincibility. So if I just like use that right off the bat, I might be able to just instantly win. So I'm feeling good. I felt even better too when I paid Shamak a visit because I realized we literally had one tarot card left to get before we'd collected them all. Confident, I rolled up to the fight with Calamar feeling optimistic. We have full fervor, so we should be fine. But we were very much not fine. Whoa, it doesn't work that well. Oh, it doesn't work that well. Is the thing? You're kidding. That wasn't even an enemy. I was in the middle of using my freaking tongue. Oh. Completely discouraged, I headed home and cooked up a late dinner slash very early breakfast. Kalamar, you are genuinely the worst. I was pretty down in the dumps after such a devastating defeat, but I felt a bit better when I realized that Sfeel had reached level 10. Truly great news. Well, not for Sfeel, obviously, but she didn't know that yet. And after saving the seahorse that I named Worm, it was time to do the deed. Goodbye, Sfeel. It was nice knowing ya. I really do apologize also. <laughs> I did like you. Yeah, that's rough. Thanks to Sfeel, Silk Cradle was now open, but I had some unfinished business to attend to, so instead, I went straight back to Anchor Deep and made my way to Calamar. Okay, I am not even gonna say a word. I'm just begging. <laughs> and on the second swing of his stupid cutlass, why? It's impossible. Do I need to just like stay away? But then how do I kill it? Oh, this is just the worst. I was starting to feel really off my game, having lost so many times to Calamar. I even forgot to extract a sin from Willow after confession that morning until she floated over to me with her eyes glowing red and everything. Yet I am a stubborn lamb, so I again went to Anchor Deep only to be met with another devastating death. That was truly the end of my rope though. I'd had enough of this god awful place, so I threw in the towel and opted to explore Silk Cradle instead. Um, I died in the first stage to a horde of fire-breathing spiders. However, I was ever determined to make any bit of progress toward our final bishop, so I re-entered once more the following day and bumped into Aim and Ball, which was such a pleasant surprise. Aim called me weak and said I lacked discipline, but hey, it's good to see you too, buddy. And shortly after, I also stumbled upon Witness Alosair. Oh no. <gasps> oh my god, I wasn't ready for that. This was our last Witness battle, and with it, the final eyeball we needed to deliver to Plimbo. But defeating Witness Alosair would not be easy. The freaking spiders, everything's shooting fire. Come on, come on, come on. No, 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 no. Come back, come back, come back. Coward, 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 come back. Where'd he go? Oh, thank goodness. Finally, we had felled our final witness, and with their eye, I continued my way through the dungeon. I'd had so much fighting practice in the prior days that beating Focalore the second felt extremely easy. I was literally shocked that it was over. Oh. That was easy. And with that victory, I returned to the cult and welcomed our final witness to the family. Unfortunately, I also learned that Egler was growing old. A devastating truth. Egler was undoubtedly a key member of Cult Boyardee, so I headed straight to Papoy to trade in some god tears, just hoping for a golden skull necklace. But to my dismay, all I got was a commandment stone and a talisman shard, so I began to prepare for the worst. To finish off the day, I upgraded the temple and early the following morning resolved to return to Silk cradle and face our next boss. On my way there though, Joe just straight up died, which was very sad. My second favorite chicken, gone. To fill the Joe-sized hole in my heart, I adopted this raccoon, but not long after, I suffered a much, much greater loss. No! Oh no! That's okay, we'll bring him back. With little health, no fervor, and deep emotional turmoil over the loss of Egler, I was not in the greatest place physically or emotionally to face Horus, but somehow, Ooh. I was able to do it. As a celebration, I headed to Smuggler's Sanctuary and delivered our final eyeball to Plimbo, getting yet another talisman shard. Plimbo was ever so grateful that I'd slain the four witnesses, and I was grateful to him too, because after tickling his fish, I got a new relic, a fingernail, which was gross, but also helpful at the same time. With Wilt initiated into the cult, I used our now completed talisman to unlock the glass cannon fleece and then traded in some god tears to get this kiwi follower form, which was so cute. Things were beginning to settle down after such a tumultuous period of dying and losing followers, so I collected my increased damage blessing from the empowered shrine of disciples and headed back to Silk Cradle. In the final stage of my crusade, though, I bumped into a character I was not especially pleased to see. Oh, it's you. You. This time would be different though, because although he'd robbed me of nearly 900 coins up to this point, this time I would rob him back. Oh, gotcha. Give me all my freaking money back. 
Okay, I think I got it all. <laughs> I destroyed Midas's camp for good measure, giving him one final smack, and then made my way to Vifar II, who I defeated with surprising ease. This meant we now only had Shamura, the final bishop, to take down. Maybe Halab was intimidated by all the spiders I'd been killing these days, because for some reason he was offering this older follower for free, and I happily took him in before entering Silk Cradle once more. But as I got to exploring, I saw that Toot had passed away, and Toot had quite a life in Colt Boyardee. He got sloshed, he danced, and even bore me a grandchild. Noodle. Most memorable of all, though, I rescued him from eternal damnation by killing him three whole times. Grieving, I collected some flowers in his memory and then unlocked the door, ready to face Shimura. Oh, that looks dreadful. Okay, I'll fight your ceaseless war. Oh, I forgot how gross that was. Okay, what if? What if I just go? What if I just freaking go? And this strategy was actually going pretty well. Oh my gosh. Why am I going kind of hammy right now? Before I knew it, Shimura was no more. Reduced to a cute little fellow that I sent back to Colt Boy RD. Our final bishop defeated at last. Upon my return, I welcomed Oldie and Shimura to the cult, the latter of which immediately started descending. Like their eyes were red during the cult orientation, so I threw them in jail. Not a great first impression, but with the four bishops released from their eternal unrest, I spoke with Papoy and received a statue of my predecessor, the one who waits. That'll definitely piss him off. Hailed as the God of Death, I got the aptly named God of Death Fleece, and then the credits rolled. Apparently, I'd technically beaten the main game, but we were only on day 185, and I still had a lot of things to accomplish. I traded all five of my God tiers to Papoy for a couple commandment stones and necklaces, and then set off for Silk Cradle once more to try and beat Shimura hitless. Okay, here we go. I am very nervous. Okay, just don't mess up. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Oh, I didn't know there was gonna be fireballs if I had known. Honestly, both versions of Shimura were giving me so much grief. After re-educating their follower form, I returned to try for the achievement again. And this time, let's go. And no tears. You're joshing. Like all the bishops before them, Shimura had lost a body part in their former domain and wanted me to retrieve it. But this time, it was their literal skull. Like I get losing an ear or leaving your throat behind, but your skull? How? Well, I mean, a relic's a relic, so I headed back to Silk Cradle to obtain it. This was actually our second to last relic too, which meant we only had one more left to find. Waraka's right fist. Unfortunately though, the only way to unlock it was to harvest meat from my dead followers. Under the cover of night, I headed to the morgue and took out Toot, hacking away at them first and shortly after doing the same to Beans the starfish. But for some reason, all I got was meat, not a relic in sight. Disappointed, I put all harvesting activities on hold as my followers awoke and went to the temple to deliver a sermon. Given the guilt I felt over obtaining this last relic, I decided to divert my attention toward the much less upsetting task of acquiring more followers forms. And our first course of action was to revisit Darkwood and find Ratu, Ratau's brother. Apparently, he assigns challenges for your crusades, and if you complete them successfully, he'll reward you with prizes. I searched and searched, but found no sign of him. So instead, I headed home to welcome our newest follower, and as I was cleaning up the outhouses, I found the biggest poop I've ever seen in my life. What? Who did this? To top it off, I found a little devotion poop with a halo shortly after, which meant I'd managed to sweep up every variation of poop in the game. My greatest achievement thus far, if I'm being honest. But as night fell once more, I returned to my horrific deeds, taking Oldie out of the morgue and chopping him up. And there it was, the final relic. With this sinful act, I'd managed to unlock every single relic, receiving the relics of the old faith achievement to prove it. I celebrated this massive accomplishment with a wonderful sermon and some more cult decorating. My first order of business was creating a shrine to all the bishops I'd killed and also adding some stick fences around the outhouses to contain the stench. Putting the bishop shrines next to the poo poo corner was not a deliberate decision, but metaphorically, it does make perfect sense. With that squared away though, I headed into Anura and Anchor Deep to continue my search for Ratu, but just like last time, had absolutely no luck. To be fair, I did kill his brother for a follower form, so I would avoid me too. Having done so much crusading the previous day, I took the morning of day 191 to chill out a bit. I did take Noodle's confession and accidentally damn him, but on the bright side, with that sin, I was able to upgrade the temple again. And now, instead of looking like a bird pooped on my crown, we had a cool, fully golden idol displayed right on top. 
I was pretty chuffed with that progress and decided to go for just one more scouting mission into Darkwood. And to my surprise, I actually managed to find him. In order to receive the reward though, I would need to get through the next three combat rooms without using any curses. Seemed easy enough. After whacking my way through enemies, which unfortunately included Damned Noodle, I made it to the other side and was rewarded with our final tarot card ever. When I returned home, I saw that the one who waits had fallen ill and with the sickly green hue on his face, he was looking the closest to Shrek that he ever had. As much as I love the full ensemble, I made sure to heal him up. I really am attached to the little guy. At this point in the playthrough, with so many loose ends tying up, I decided that before the end of our 200 days, I really wanted to get our temple fully upgraded. In the interest of doing so, I took Wormburger's confession early the following morning to harvest more sin, and I may have accidentally damned them. I'm starting to think taking confession is not my calling. Unfortunately, I just had so many things to do, and rescuing Noodle and Wormburger was not at the top of my priority list. I'm sure they'll be fine, and in the meantime, we replaced them with Bug and Oldie the Second. Nobody will notice. And speaking of things at the top of my list, I'd gone almost the entirety of this playthrough without exploring the portal to Purgatory that Papoy had opened up on day 131. So as we began day 194, I decided to give it a go, hoping to ultimately obtain the Slayer of Souls achievement, which requires us to complete an entire row of challenges. Basically, Purgatory is a challenge feature of the game where you undergo a dungeon gauntlet wearing the different fleeces in the game to obtain god tiers. There is also a boss rush challenge, but I figured my best chance at finishing a row was to just try and complete the gauntlets with one of the less difficult fleeces. For our first go around, I just went with the basic fleece of the lamb and made it all the way to the boss Horus, earning two total god tiers for defeating them. And lucky us, I actually managed to unlock this penguin follower form from Papoy, one of the many that we had left to earn from them. It was actually at this moment that I'd come to terms with the fact that we'd most likely not be collecting all the follower forms in this episode. So instead, I turned my attention to taking care of our dearest Beefaroni and trying to collect all the outfits for the tailor. For some reason, Bareth's shop that I'd come across on Crusades had been sold out for the past couple weeks. Upon doing some research, I realized I'd already obtained all the outfit designs from each region, meaning I now only had the outfits acquired from performing certain activities left to get. The first being the Jester costume, a reward for crafting a total of 25 outfits, which was no trouble at all. Next up was the drink tender vest, earned for serving 30 drinks at the drink house. I wasn't sure how many I'd already made so far, but I figured if I just started producing them more regularly, it would pop up eventually. I started everyone off with some bog brews, but right as I rang the drink bell, Oldie the second died. Fantastic. As a byproduct of my excessive drink tending, pretty much everyone was walking around befuddled, except for Beefaroni, who swore he wasn't drunk, cross his fart. Yeah, I took this as a sign to chill out on the drinks for a minute, and although I promised myself I would never Never do it again. In order to obtain our next outfit, the chef's jacket, I needed to crack three eggs in total. As much as I hated to do it, I paired up Willow and Hiket and immediately smashed their egg. And after doing the same with Shimura and Worm, I'd obtained the chef jacket. But at what cost? Ashamed and disappointed in myself, I entered Purgatory, the place I felt I belonged, and defeated Horus once more just to get my mind off everything. In exchange for more god tears, Popoi once again bestowed me with a gold skull necklace and a talisman shard, which I used to unlock the golden fleece. Following an inspiring drum circle for her cat, which may have been slightly too inspiring, I took stock of how our followers were doing. For one, Calamar was still being extremely cheeky and annoying, Sacrifice had reached old age, and poor Worm had gotten himself stuck in the corner. But it felt like something was missing, something that could only be fixed by yet another marriage. Now that all my previous spouses were dead, I could think of no one better to be my partner than my first ever follower, Beefaroni. Now nothing, not time nor death, could keep us apart. To celebrate our union, I whipped up some drinks at the bar and coincidentally got myself the drink tender vest. Much to my dismay though, Sacrifice died immediately after. I like to think they held on just to be there for my wedding, but as someone born into this world purely to be a sacrifice, I'd say they had a long and happy life. They will be dearly missed. As night fell, I re-entered Purgatory and began the second gauntlet challenge with the Fleece of the Lamb. I easily triumphed over both bosses and earned myself more god tiers to trade with Papoy, getting myself the Pelican follower form. On the morning of day 199, I took Calamar's confession and directly after, he stole another 100 coins from me. <sighs> 
Honestly, I'm used to it at this point. I was genuinely quite frustrated with Calamar's behavior, and in an effort to restore Colt Boyardee to the beautiful utopia it once was, I decided to resurrect a follower. And not just any follower, but Egler, one of our very best. Not only that, but I gifted Egler with their very own Golden Skull necklace, so we'd never have to live without them again. And with Egler alive once more, it was the perfect opportunity to ensure their bloodline. I matched them up with the one who waits, definitely a power couple, and and gently laid their egg into the nest. There would be no more egg smashing around these parts. After making us such a beautiful egg, I felt it was only right to fulfill our request for the one who waits to collect some silk from Silk Cradle. On the way, I purchased this little fella and then made my way through the dungeon in search of spiders. Conveniently, I managed to collect the last bit of silk I needed while simultaneously saving Hiket from damnation. And with nothing left to do, I returned home to welcome Pelipper and Hiket. After wrapping up the sermon the following morning, I realized that we were only only a couple sins away from the next temple upgrade. With one confession from Beefaroni and a quick bongo session for Wilt, we'd earned enough sin for the upgrade and got some nice lamb statues as well as some big old teeth on the temple icon. It also appeared as if there was only one more upgrade before the temple was fully finished, so we were making great progress on our goals. I went to Purgatory once more for an afternoon visit, trading in my god tears for another gold necklace. But when I got home, the one who waits asked me to resurrect his friend Spork, which I don't even know who that is, but... Okay. I called everyone to the temple and scrolled all the way down until... Ah, yes. Spork. We all remember you, for sure, for sure. Welcome back to the land of the living. Early on day 202, Eggler and the one who waits egg was ready to hatch, and I decided to name them the one who eggs after their parents. With only about four days left to go, I very much wanted to complete the goals I set out to accomplish, one of which being to fully upgrade the temple. However, we still needed a lot of sin to do so, and to get it, I hosted a ritual of lust and then made some post-ritual drinks. As a personal celebration, I went on a trip to Purgatory and completed the next gauntlet, swiftly finishing off Amduzius and Leshy and arriving at the final boss. I get a feeling this is not gonna go well, but, uh, we'll see. Oh, boy! Oh, I forgot about that tongue! Girl, why? The tongue, it's coming, I know it! Go, 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 go! Yes! Oh, look at my little guy. Look at him go. With that win under my belt, I went back to my cult leader duties, purchasing this follower from Halab and then saucing Beefaroni a couple more gifts to level up his loyalty. But as I did so, I suddenly realized I still hadn't defeated Calamar Hitless. I dropped everything at once to revisit Anchor Deep and in my very first room. Oh God. Noodle was just waiting to exact their revenge, but even more unexpectedly. Wait, that's literally, I was stuck. I was stuck in the like barrier following probably my worst performance in anchor deep to date i returned home and saw that beefaroni wanted me to make witness alocer eat poop over the past weeks i'd actually been carefully preparing to add beefaroni to my circle of disciples but this was not very disciple like behavior at the end of the day though i'd do anything to bring him to level 10 loyalty beefaroni was quite pleased with our poop prank and funny enough feeding witness alocer this bowl of poop was actually the very thing that brought him to level 10 and having finally leveled him up, I headed to the temple immediately to make him an official disciple. I'm so proud, my boy. With Beefaroni as my immortal husband and disciple, I returned to Anchor Deep and ran into Noodle. Okay, watch me die in like 10 seconds. Wait, no, but I have the invincibility. Okay, wait, this might be actually good. Just go, 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 go. He knows, he knows. Just go, go. Oh no. I'm gonna scurry. That was the perfect setup. Oh my god, guys. Filled with disappointment, I returned home and lifted my spirits with a sermon. But this only reminded me that we had sin to collect in order to fully upgrade the temple. I held confession with Calamar, and in exchange for his sins, I got robbed again. I hate you so much. Like, genuinely, I hope you know. As horribly as Calamar was treating me, there were some good eggs in Colt Boyardee. And surprisingly, one of my favorites was the one who waits. He had inexplicably grown to become one of my favorite followers, and on this day, I decided that he would become a disciple too. Truly, what a journey he's had. From the one in chains who saved me from death, to the final boss trying to kill me, to an adorable little cat disciple. That evening, I entered Anchor Deep for what felt like the 100th time, determined to kill Calamar Hitless. It was now or never, and 
Well, it was never, I guess. With only two days left of our journey, I decided to finish with the Crusades and just spend the rest of our time at home with my lovely followers. Talamar would have to wait until the next video. However, I still really wanted to get the final temple upgrade, so I spent the day doing all sorts of sinful things. Getting crunk, dancing, and getting more crunk. In real life, this would be a counterproductive way to get a building renovated, I realize. You got two tasty drinks waiting for you. What do you want, Beefaroni? Let's do it again. Oh my god with the bowl of poop. This is gonna be a bad day for you, buddy. Poor witness Alasair and Simon continued drinking, yielding two more sins, and rounded our total up to 12, which was the exact amount I needed to upgrade the temple. However, we would have to wait until tomorrow morning's sermon, so I headed back to Purgatory to continue working on the row for our Fleece of the Lamb. And this time, after all our work exploring and fighting the bosses, it came down to the fight with Calamar, who, surprise, surprise, killed me. I really do despise this squid in every shape and form. The only consolation was that we earned some more god tiers and, with them, received some new dog and rat follower forms. And just like that, we'd reached our final day in Cult Boy RD for this video. I did some general housekeeping and cooked up breakfast, setting aside a bowl of poop for Witness Alosair, which Beefaroni really got a kick out of. Although we'd gotten two new follower forms the day before, we still had a bunch left to get, including five normal ones and ten from the DLC. For sure more than I'd ever be able to get in one day. Regardless, I welcomed Snoy friend my snail boyfriend to the cult, and then headed to the temple for our last upgrade. Yay! Oh, it's so pretty though. I love it. Wait, that's not it? Dang it! I was truly devastated by this news, and to make matters worse, Beefaroni then approached me asking that I throw Witness Alosair in prison. Beefaroni, oh my god. You can't just do this. <laughs> Why are you abusing your power? He clearly had some beef with Alosair, what with all the bowls of poop and now this, but I didn't want to make him sad, so I just accepted the quest and ignored it. I'm not about to falsely imprison my followers, especially on our last day. After that little chat, I bestowed the one who waits with a golden skull necklace to match the rest of our disciples and made some dinner for my dear followers. And to cap off the final moments of these 100 days, I spent the night in my leader tent for the first time ever, taking a much needed rest amongst my followers. We got so much done in these 100 days. We beat all the mini bosses and bishops again, completed our tarot deck, and collected every single weapon, relic, and curse. Not to mention taking part in all manners of sin. The cult itself looks so nice as well with upgraded housing, decoration, and fully automated farms and refineries. I will be the first to admit there were some goals we weren't able to accomplish, namely upgrading the temple and killing all the bishops hitless. Freaking Kalamar. But I mean, at the end of the day, that just means I have my work cut out for me in the next 100 days to come. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. And if you did, feel free to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. I'd absolutely love to have you here and it means a ton. And as I mentioned, please, dear God, leave a name suggestion down below because I am clearly running out. All right, that is all I have for today, but I will see you guys next time. Bye!